Hey, what's going on everybody? Dan here. Uh, coming to you tonight doing something a little bit different. I want to do um, a review, maybe more of a first impressions video of the new GoPro Fusion. This is GoPro's 360 virtual reality camera touted to be a replacement for the GoPro, the only camera you'll ever need. Um, I believe we're about a month in on uh, since its release. I think it came out towards the 25th of November. I just picked this up about three days ago. Um, I've put it through some light paces, and I just want to give uh, my overall impressions of this, uh, this camera. Now, let's start with uh, I love GoPro. Uh, I'm shooting this on a GoPro Hero 5, I've got a GoPro Hero 4 Black, I've got a GoPro 3, so I love GoPro. Uh, I shoot most of my camping videos with GoPros, love the versatility and everything. Um, this, one's, this one's got a little bit of a hefty price tag to it, I mean you're talking uh, $699, so it's a, it's a little bit salty, uh, a little bit bigger than your traditional GoPro, I don't have another GoPro in here, but a little bit bigger. Um, not that much, doesn't really weigh that much. Um, so let's just get right into this. Um, it came with the GoPro, it came with the battery, it did not come with the SD cards, important to know. Um, in here, uh, there's actually slots for two SD cards. It shoots one SD card to the front camera, one SD card to the back camera. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, we're going to try something. So. There is my phone, and I don't know if that's going to focus or not, but I'm actually doing a live preview of that right now so I can talk a little bit about it. Um, so it did not come with the two SD cards. It came with a couple of the, the standard GoPro mounts. We're all familiar with these. And then it also came with this really cool monopod that actually turns into, if I can get a hold of it, actually turns into a handy dandy little tripod. It's kind of cool. Um, so that was nice. So once I got the two SD cards loaded in, um, it's pretty pretty standard. It's got the screen on it just like most of the other GoPros. You can walk through the different modes. It has the voice activation feature. Um, I immediately started diving into the settings and I noticed that, let's just go through here. When you're looking at this, you are change this over to video you have two options in here you have a 3k resolution and a 5.2k resolution so the first video I shot I shot at a 5.2k resolution 5.2k resolution uh, huge file I'll get into the exporting here in a minute took absolutely forever brought that back to 3k because you know thinking about YouTube mobile devices, the traditional or the, the typical experience is going to be 1080p anyway. So, you know, starting at 3K and dropping back down in signal is going to be much better. 3K is kind of pointless. I'm a little disappointed that they don't have more options from 3K down. And I don't know if that has something to do with the 360 experience and the stitching. I don't know if it has to shoot at that frame rate in order to dial it back uh, for the final quality. The video that I uh, that I tested with when I loaded it up on uh, YouTube, it was definitely a lower. It was down in the 1080 range. So I'm not sure there, but I feel like they should give you more options. And as of right now, you only have the option for 60 frames a second. I don't know that you would need 30 frames a second for this, but uh, you know, it, I found it kind of weird that there's just 60 frames a second on there. Um, going in and talking about the software, so I really liked that uh, they touted that they had a plug-in for Premiere Pro, which is what I use to edit all my videos, but they also have the GoPro Fusion Studio, which is a free download, and a downloaded GoPro Fusion Studio V1. Got to say, it's very buggy. Um, I kind of expected that. You have two options for importing your um, your video or your photos. You can import directly from the camera, or you can obviously take the SD cards out. The import from the camera is a little wonky right now. Sometimes it would say that it didn't recognize back camera or front camera, um, so I had some issues there. 
I had a lot more consistency when I was actually downloading from the SD cards, which I know is a recommended way of doing things anyway. Once you're in there, it's pretty basic what options you have right now, and I know that they are talking about adding a lot more options into the suite. Um, from the software itself, this is where you can create the tiny planet look. You can mess with the pitch and the yaw of the video, so you can kind of create some unique looks and feels in the video. You can set some basic in and out points within the video. I have not tried editing multiple clips together in there, but it looks like you can do that within it. And then when you go over to the actual uh, rendering, you're, you're given several options. You're giving the render option of editing, which when I hover over it says, editing is if you want to edit your 360 video and other tools like Adobe Premiere. I did try that, I haven't created a full video, but when I, edit, when I rendered out of Fusion 1.0, created a .mov file that I brought over into Premiere and was able to do uh, editing from there. It also has Facebook, YouTube and Vimeo. Now the one thing I did notice that it has YouTube and it says if you want to share the video on YouTube it sets a specific 360 sound and video preset not compatible with Facebook. What I do want to note is, is you still have to do the step of adding the metadata to the video if you render out of this for YouTube. So I'm not sure why it doesn't go ahead and do all of that for you. Um, so there is that extra step. You need to render out of Fusion and then uh, download the free tool. I'll put a link down below. But uh, YouTube offers a free tool to add the metadata to your video file and then you can push it up. Um, then when you get into the, uh, the media resolution, you have the 5 2K, you have the 4K, the 3K, and then you have a 2K. So, um, and then you have stereo sound or 360 audio. And I haven't messed with the 360 audio yet, but it sounds like it's like an advanced audio to where wherever you look in the camera, as you're moving around in the 360, it's trying to bring that, that specific sound at you. So it sounds pretty cool. Um, I've played with the stereo. I can tell you that it takes a really long time to render these files. Um, I shot in the 5.2K and I tried rendering in the 5.2K. I'm on a brand new MacBook Pro and I couldn't do anything on my machine and it was like a five hour process. I mean it was painful. Um, that was on a 15-20 minute clip, so a longer clip, but I could see doing a 15-20 minute clip on something. Um, today I played around with a much smaller clip, and I'm going to try to load some samples up, but I played around with a much smaller clip, I think it was about four minutes. I actually rendered that out in 3K, and it was still, it still took some, uh, some time, it was a little chunky, but it wasn't nearly as bad. Again, I don't know why I would render at that 5, 2K, or even that 4K, or, or to be honest, even the 3K with what you're going to be putting up to YouTube, or Vimeo, or Facebook, but they do give you the options. I will say, again, going back to the bugginess of the Fusion, I've had quite a few issues when I get into the rendering screen. Um, the progress bar will not work correctly, or it will randomly fail rendering, but when I restart rendering, it works perfectly fine. Or again, it will throw that uh, camera one, I think they call it camera front, uh, file not found, or camera back file not found, and they're both there. So. I can see that they still got some bugs in it, and you know that's probably to be expected considering we're only a month in on this. Would I honestly recommend buying this for $700 as my end-all, be-all camera? Not right now. Um, I think the features that they're talking about coming out with, the one-click button for Tiny Planet, the, um, the easier ability to select the frames from within the video and edit directly that. So if you think about shooting the 360 video, but then being able to turn and look and cut a section out of that video and shoot more of a linear video, some of these features as they come along, I could see that being a lot better. Um, some of the immediate issues I can think of is, uh, you know, we went out and purchased a additional light for our GoPro. So 
when we're shooting inside the camper or we're shooting at night or some darker spaces, we have some light options. You're gonna run into some issues with this, at least right now. Doesn't have a housing that comes with it. Not sure where you're gonna mount lights on this. So not gonna do as well in the darker situations. Definitely bigger. You're forced to shoot 4K or 5.2K, so you're gonna have a lot larger file sizes. So you're not gonna be able to get as much footage on this as you could a traditional GoPro or any other camera. Um, and I'm just not sure the practicality of going through all of the steps to get my 360 video from here out to the out to the world really um, is feasible enough on a regular basis to use this as my everyday go-to camera like I said I, I see a lot of promise in this if they get some of these little things cleaned up to where you can make some linear videos out of that so Think about if you've got this out, you're just shooting video, you're capturing, you're capturing, you're capturing, you're not worrying about exactly what you're capturing, and then later on you can go back, you can look around, you can decide what you want, and you can pull those specific things. I mean, that's that's gold right there. That, that makes life so much easier because you don't have to worry about getting the exact shot. But we're not there yet with this. So it's it's fun, it's definitely cool. Um, I think it's, it's kind of like a drone, it's a great, accent piece to your arsenal uh, a great addition to your arsenal um, I'm gonna have to play around with stitching 360 into other videos like I'm not even sure how that works or if that's even gonna work so I've got a traditional video and then I break into so see that's not gonna work so I can't even imagine if we're going out doing a full camping review video um, of a campground that we're at where I'm basically either going to be creating a 360 video to share or I'm going to create a traditional or maybe I'm creating both and I'm linking so now I'm doubling my work so you can see where there's a lot of questions now if we get some accessories for this we get it made a little bit easier to a little more intuitive to use I, I can see some really cool things the last thing I want to mention is with your traditional GoPros, you're able to pull your videos and your photos down directly to your phone and share those out. You're not able to do that with this. Uh, I'm on an iPhone and the iPhone will not recognize the photo types. So what I ended up doing, and it's a crappy workaround, is you're saving it. It's saving it local into your GoPro local bin. And then I'm actually taking a screenshot of that with my phone. So you can imagine how much the quality or resolution of that is degrading as I'm going. So definitely need to build some additional options in there to say create that tiny planet look and then be able to take a screenshot of that and share that out with friends or, or on any of your social. So again, I'm not saying this is a complete miss. I'm saying it's an expensive investment right now. Um, so what I would recommend is keeping your eye out on updates, check out the forums, watch for other YouTube videos um, as this software progresses. I'll certainly keep you guys up to date as new uh, firmware upgrades come out and the software continues to build. And I might hold off. This might be something that's a little bit better for Christmas of 2018 instead of 2017. So. Thanks for watching. If you've got questions or comments, please leave them down below. As always, would love for you to hit that uh, like button and follow along with us by subscribing. We're trying to do weekly videos a lot more in the summer to come. But again, thanks for watching.